I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm a member of the End User Tools Group, and I'm here to present Japanese beetle trapping visual and aircraft inspections. And I've put up a little kind of schedule here because I know some of you are interested in trapping and visual, but you may not participate in aircraft inspections. So you're very welcome to drop off when we get to that point. I'm not gonna take it personally, I promise. Um, I understand, but you're also welcome to hang out and, and stay here for it. What I'm gonna do is we'll start right on time. I've got Pacific time because I think that's, what most of you are on. I'm in mountain time, so it's 11 my time. But we'll start with trapping and visual. And um, it is much anticipated, but this is in one map. And last year was in two maps. So we're, we're joining that into one. Then we'll, we'll work through that as, as quickly as we can, give some room for questions, take a little 15 minute break if I can uh, make that happen. I'll try. And then we'll come back um, at the next hour and talk about aircraft inspections. A couple of things just to note, I'll let these bounce in here. Our trapping and visual is a, uh, this is the icon for ArcGIS field maps. So that is in ArcGIS field maps, but aircraft inspections is in survey one, two, three. So I just want to point that out before we move too far into this. That's what that is. All right, I'm going to turn my camera off. I distract myself when I, <laughs> when I have my camera on. Um, so what are we going to talk about today? Um, I'm going to put a couple links in the chat here, which I always do for our trainings. So if you're used to me, you're used to these two links. Um, I just want to walk you through them before we go further because they're excellent resources. The first link is to this mobile data collection tools web page. It is a public facing APHIS web page. It's a little buried, so the public might have a hard time finding it, but it is made for access by the public, which means you can get here any time of the day. All you need is a web browser. So it's a really important tool. The top half of it is documents and the bottom half is a video gallery. You may have noticed we're recording this training for Japanese Beetle. Um, give me about a week, but the video will show up in this video gallery, probably up here in the top left where the newest ones are placed. You can search for it by title here in the search bar. It gets categorized as a pest program. So if you need to narrow things down, you just click on that button and see only pest programs. Um, so that will show up here. Documents, um, field maps and Field maps and survey one, two, three both have general user guides that are here under the general training documents. They also both have video series that help walk you through how to use them. You can search again here or you can look under foundations and I would recommend taking yourself through these. Um, they're self-paced. They've got a quiz at the end. You can open the quiz from the start and go through things. You could pick and choose things that you're maybe not sure of or you want a refresher on, but those are here for you to refresh your memory. The PEST program training um, documents here, and I've got the page open, allows you to choose by PEST program specific um, user guides and reference. So I'll go to Japanese Beetle here, open that up, and you can see we have trapping and visual surveys. There's a quick reference and a user manual, and also airport inspections. There's a quick reference and a user manual. So if you're like me, I like to have those open and follow along up to you. Um, some, some users um, download them to their iPad so they can look at them in the field. The quick reference is meant to be kind of like a one pager. I think in the case of visual and trapping, it's maybe two pages. I couldn't fit it in one, um, but just meant as like a cheat sheet. So take advantage of, of these documents and use them well. The second link I gave you is a link to this training quiz. And it's not mandatory, it's not required at all, but it kind of helps us all out a little bit. One thing that it does, if I scroll down a little bit, this question three asks for your email address and you have to manually enter this. So this email address, um, it, it can be internal or external. It could be a state um, cooperator that's, that's taking this quiz. If you enter your email address here and submit the quiz, you'll get an automated email using this email address, so be careful there, um, which will say training complete. This is what tells you you've completed the training. I don't worry too much. I try to make the questions really easy. It's not meant to be um, 
worrisome or add panic, but it is meant to help you just kind of cement the information that we want to make sure that you're learning in your head. So it's a great way for you to, while it's fresh, just test your memory. Secondly, it helps me too. It helps me see that what I'm telling you or showing you in these trainings is getting through that I'm being understood and allows me to see where I could maybe do better. And it gives me some really good metrics to go on. So it helps both of us out a little bit. So this is here, I give it to you early because I don't wanna add pressure here. It's gonna ask you questions um, only on what you are using. So in the case of aircraft inspections, it'll say, are, do you plan to um, to submit data for aircraft inspections? If you say no, you won't get any review questions. So there's no pressure here for you to answer things you don't need to. And it's not meant to be scary. So if you also have another screen and you wanna have this open, if I answer the question, you can go ahead and fill it in as we go. I don't mind at all, but this is that second link. All right, so let's dive in. What we'll, what we'll kind of use to guide our discussion today, I always like to show you kind of this, the basics of signing in to ArcGIS field maps. Um, we're going to talk about an overview of the disconnected workflow. If you don't have a firm understanding of that, Again, go back to those self-paced videos and have a look at how to do that in depth. And so we'll overview that. We'll take a look at the map layers involved. As I said, both visual and trapping are joined in one map this year for convenience sake. And they're, um, the data is added according to the layer. So we'll look at it and I'll give you a demo on my iPad view so that you can see how that looks. And then just kind of hit some reminders. Hopefully by the time we get to reminders, I've already talked about all those things, but it's kind of, for me, it helps make sure that I did cover those points. So we'll kind of cover that too. All right, ArcGIS field maps. Um, as I said, there is support for you. There is a user guide and I think there's 10 videos in a self-paced video series. You should have completed this as a prerequisite to using it. If you haven't, please at least do it one time or just make sure that you feel comfortable and confident using it. Again, you can find that on the website link that I've placed in the chat. So please make sure that you feel comfortable there. When you first open field maps, you get a screen kind of like this guy. And it's got a couple of sign-in options. We as federal employees, our data is housed in an enterprise system. So we're always gonna tap sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise, this option in the red box there. And then it's gonna ask you to either specify a new URL or scan a code. And we choose specify a new URL and that will open up the keyboard and allow you to type in manually this URL, which you might've, some of you eagle eyes probably already noticed. Um, after that, it saves it for you, the URLs that you've typed in previously. So you wanna type it in carefully and then after that, you can just tap right on the URL that, that you'd like to use to sign in. And I'm showing you this piece of the sign in process. We now have to use mobile link in order to sign in as federal employees, unless you have a PIV exemption. And so mobile link is a whole separate kind of CEC IT step for securing our data. That, um, that also has a little video um, to kind of walk you through what that looks like. So I'm not gonna go into detail there, but this URL that you type in is important. And the reason why is my team creates a official, an official um, map for Japanese Beetle to collect data. And that is housed in this top production URL. So that's the URL you just saw on the previous screen. And we also create a training version of that map. And the purpose of that is so we can play a little, so we can practice and feel comfortable. But the training versions of those maps are hosted under a different URL, under a different instance of our enterprise portal. And I'm just gonna give you a couple of little red squares so you can see the difference. The difference is in that sign in. So when you're signing in and you type in that URL, if you are going to enter official data, that needs to be in the production um, instance, that top URL, which is maps.mrp. 
Usda. If you're going to practice or train or maybe do an exercise, or in this case today, I will use this as a demonstration tool. Any fake or play data, we want to make sure that we've signed into this maps-stg.mrp. STG is in stage or staging instance. So this is a, a quiz question. You want to be sure that this sign in is done correctly. And if you're in any doubt, sign out and sign back in again. There's a couple of tips for our training versions, maps and surveys. The training title of a map or a survey begins with the word training, as you might hope for, in all capital letters. So if you are in a training map, do not enter official data and vice versa. If you're in an official map, don't enter test or fake or, or um, training or practice data. Just make sure you're keeping that straight. And we talked about the disconnected workflow and overviewing that a little bit. I look at it kind of like planning a road trip. I don't know if you all think about this when you go out into the field. Um, for me, one of the first things I think about is snacks. I really get stressed out if I don't have my snacks in place. Water, snacks, where am I gonna use the bathroom? but also the route that I plan to take. So here she is looking at a map. Maybe she wants to get from the top of one mountain to the top of another. Well, she can't just fly straight across. So a route might seem like it's gonna take a little bit of extra time, or it may look like the fastest way and be too dangerous or fail to actually connect to the destination altogether. So you can't always take the path as the bird flies in planning a trip and using that disconnected workflow is kind of part is is part of that planning process if you've planned your route well then the trip goes smoothly i don't have to have the the worry of about where am i going to use the bathroom when will i have a snack if i get hungry um, what kind of music i'm going to listen to all those kind of things on the way so i kind of use this um this is a little analogy to um Take some time, pause with me today, just to be sure we're using the best path to collecting that data in the field. And a huge part of that is this disconnected workflow. And it really hinges on what's in this red box, the office prep. And for many, this office prep is done once and it, it works for them the whole season. Um, but basically, the, the basics are that you want to be connected to Wi-Fi, to a, a reliable Wi-Fi connection and download a map area to your device. And then once that's there, you can disconnect from Wi-Fi and collect data in the field without being connected. Now I had this little parking lot test. And what I mean is once you've got a map area, obviously just don't go driving out and assume everything's great. Let's do some tests in the parking lot, open it up, make sure it's behaving correctly, and then go on out. So I kind of add that little bullet point. Maybe that's just me, but I highly recommend giving it a good test. So this office prep is really you planning that road trip, making sure that you're going to be successful, collect the data out in the field. The other really important thing besides that bit is this daily data sync. So at the end of the day, when you connect back to Wi-Fi, you'll hit that sync button, synchronize your data. It's a two-way sync, pulls in updates from that online hosted map service into your map area, and it pulls your data that you've collected in the field up into that online map service. So, um, and charge the device, maybe that's obvious, but I put that as a bullet point. I sometimes need to be reminded of those steps myself. Um, one thing about this sync though, the Japanese beetle trapping uh, layer does have a couple of nightly scripts that are running, um, updating activities and giving you symbology. Um, for instance, when a trap activity has occurred 14 days after that, it gets changed to a status of do. And so that kind of thing. Also, um, if a trap activity of remove is entered, there's a script operating overnight that the next day would change that symbol to inactive. And so that synchronization could happen in the morning and in the evening in that in the morning when you hit sync you may not be pushing out your data but you'd be pulling in those updates so that sync is very important to this disconnected flow data layers as i said we've got a map with both visual and trap sites and you can see these listed here as the active 2023 layers 
on the device, the field maps application always has a default markup layer. This layer is not an official data collection layer and is hosted only on your device. So if you plan to use it, just be sure you've checked with your supervisor and have an understanding of what needs to happen there. Be sure you're not entering any survey information in this markup layer. Alternatively, we have created a Japanese beetle map notes points, which kind of takes on the idea of a markup layer in that it does allow you to leave comments that are more trapping, you know, more kind of like collaborative related, not necessarily data information that's collected for the program, but more about the trapping. So it allows you to enter information and hazard points. And that layer is shared among all. So that way, if another trapper is in that area, they can see, oh, this, this bit of information or that hazard should be noted. Maybe it's dogs, um, maybe it's property information, maybe it's just a nice place to eat your lunch in the shade. So I'll show you that as well um, when I demo these layers, but that is an official data layer that you can use. Just be aware it is shared across for everyone, so make sure the things you're sh sharing there are appropriate. All right, so that's the layers. Let's have a look at what this actually looks like. Um, I'm going to try to remember to show you. I've got my uh, iPhone here to the side. So what I'm going to do is open field maps. And field maps has already pulled me in from a previous sign in. It also pulled me into the last map that I was in, which happens to be our Japanese beetle map. I'm going to go back twice to that main maps page. And this is the page that you will use to identify and it's still loading and you probably can't see that little uh, twirly bit up here on the top right, but the page is still loading, but I can tell right away. I am in the stage environment, and that's the first thing I want to ask myself. I plan to enter data that is not official today. So I want to make sure that I'm seeing training in the titles, and you can see many of our uh, thumbnails also say training. If I was in doubt, though, I could go open my profile menu, scroll up, and sign out, and then go ahead and sign back in to the correct URL. I, I know I'm okay here today, so I'm not going to do that. Next, I'm looking for the training version of the Japanese beetle trapping and visual field map. And I can see it's right there on top. In fact, I've also already downloaded offline areas, so I've got a note there. I'll open that map card. And I am connected to Wi-Fi. I've stayed connected just so I could show you that, um, that view. I've got an offline area listed as current. I can see how big that um, file is. And I have a category of online map. And this is only showing because I'm connected to the internet. If I disconnect, I won't see that online map anymore. So I'm gonna go ahead into my offline map, open that up. And I've renamed it. You, you may have a different name here, but you can see it still holds on to this is the name of the full online map. And this is my offline map title that I've renamed it. Across the top here, I have this these two arrows. This is your sync button. And one thing you want to be sure of is the auto sync should be disabled. As you see here, you can toggle that on or off. You want to be sure that you're performing that sync as the user when you are connected to Wi-Fi and when it's a reliable Wi-Fi network and you're ready to monitor that. You don't want the device automatically syncing things for you. So that all looks good. I'm going to go ahead and close that. Then we have our layers menu. This should look exactly like that slide we just saw. And we have the visual and trap sites enabled. So I'm going to leave those both enabled because I want to show you both of those. And a real handy tool here is in this three dot or overflow menu, the legend. So with those enabled, I can tap legend and I can see what these symbols mean on the map. And you can see that trap sites begins as current and uh, the symbols change for do and inactive here. So let's go ahead and try to enter a visual survey, shall we? Let's start with that. Um, so the visual survey here, if I close that, in order to add data, we're going to tap the add button. Lower right is a little plus button. And the two layers that are enabled are visual and trap. And so we just choose between them. We're going to enter a visual survey. 
I'll tap that. And now that data form is present. Now it put that symbol right under my actual GPS location. It, it might be a little hard to see. So I'm going to pull that out actually. I'll pull it out over here and update that point. There we go. So now we're updating this visual survey here. It happens to be at an elementary school near my house. The form itself has automatic, automated defaults. So the agency pulled in, but if I want to change that, I tap and choose something else. Let's say I'm a state cooperator. We've got some hints. First and last names. OK, I'll enter my first and last name using the keyboard. Done. Um, airport is got a nice little list for me to choose from. Uh, let's see. Let's go Chicago. Airport comments. I'm going to say test there just to fill it in. But you'll note that there is a star here on some. That means it's required field. And some don't have required um, stars. So the comment fields don't have that. You'll need to enter data for anything with this star indicating it's retire required. Um, and survey comments, I'm going to go ahead and put test as well. One of the things that trips me up is this date. So it opens up a calendar for me. And it is restricted to this year, but sometimes you go back um, or forward or something uh, trying to find the date. And sometimes my fingers will slip in and choose a date that's inappropriate. To get back to today, there is this little today button. I can just tap today. And then I like to tap the field to close that calendar, just close that up. We also have a little group for quality control report. And these fields are maintained by GIS and editors. So they're not something you need to worry about uh, filling out out in the field. So a couple of answers were, were responded to with no as defaults, whether Japanese beetle was observed or a spotted lanternfly. If this needs to be altered to yes, then you can go ahead and do that. Same thing for a spotted lanternfly. Yes. And if I hit yes for spotted lanternfly, you probably notice there's a little group of questions here that is indicated as required. So if I say I've spotted lantern, I've spotted spotted lanternfly, I'm going to go ahead and open this group of questions and complete these questions as well. Um, so you have options here on what to choose. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to go back and say no for the sake of time. You will follow survey protocol. Um, again, I don't, I'm not the proponent for that. I'm not the right person. I'm just showing you how to fill out the form, but you'll want to make sure you know uh, survey protocol when you get to these questions. All right, some of you may have noticed I missed a required field. I'm going to hit submit as if I was done anyway. And you can see you do get a little warning here. An attribute failed. Well, an attribute is referring to a field over here in the form. And if I tap view, it kind of moves it down a little bit so that I've got right there. That's the field I missed. And in red, this is required. So I need to enter the place name. And I'm just using kind of test information here. I'll fill that out. I'd want to give this another look over to be sure that I've completed everything else. And now I'll hit submit. And submitting this edit to my downloaded map area means that this edit now lives in my map on my device. And so this sync button has kind of changed a little bit. Now we've added that. It's got a little dot on the outgoing arrow. And if we tap this, you can see there are edit is listed as a pending edit that needs to be synced up to the map. So there's our list of edits. So that's our visual surveys. Let's walk through a couple things on the trapping layer before I demo that. Um, let's see here. A couple of, I'm going to go back a little. I'll just leave it here. A couple of things to note on the trapping layer. Um, the way that the trapping data is collected in this field maps application, it views your first visit your first data entry as placing the trap. So you place the trap in that it takes the data, the data form on that one location, it places the symbol on the map, and, and the symbol comes in as a current trap to begin with. And that data form asks you for the install date. 
After that, every visit to that same trap site is considered a trap activity and is entered in a related table, a form related to that initial form. And so there's a couple things that sometimes trip people up, um, making sure that you enter a trap activity every time you visit um, is really important. And also sometimes relocating a trap can be can be something that needs to happen. And so your activity on the original site needs to be entered and then the placement of that trap has to happen. Let's walk through that. I just wanna show you what that looks like. So let me show you the iPad again. Let's exit out of there. So you wanna make sure that in the layers menu, your trap sites layer is active and it is. And then we want to first add a trap. So adding data, means the add button. So we're going to tap the add button. And the first visit is placing the trap. So we're going to go ahead and tap that trap option. And you can see that this current trap schedule status or the status of that trap is defaulted to current on, on the first visit. And the trap type and lure are always the same. And they're here for you. They're not editable, but they're just visually there for you. And again, it put it right under me. So I'm going to move it out just a little. I'll move it into this neighborhood and update the point so you can see it there. That trap symbol there, if you remember from the legend, means current. So the symbol itself is already saying it's current as well. Then we're going to go ahead and enter in the data form, just like the visual surveys. We have required fields. So we've got an origin airport. Now I'm out in the middle of Colorado, so this doesn't make a lot of sense. Just bear that in mind. That's just my location. Um, I'm going to say the originating airport is Iowa. I have to give it a site name. Again, I think I'm on test four. I have to give it a trap ID. I'm going to give this the same name to be consistent. Surveyor, again, first and last names. I'll fill that out. Install date. Again, be careful with this install date. I usually hit today and close it. Trap site comments. I'll say test. There's a couple more groups here in the trapping form. Optional address details. And you can open it by tapping and enter that data if you have it. I'll close that up. Optional contact information. Same thing. Enter that data if you have it and close that group of questions and the quality control report, just like the visual layer. There it is. OK, we're going to give this a glance. Everything looks good. I'm going to hit submit. And we have placed that trap. Now, let's say we need to visit and perform an activity on another trap. So let's let's use this one up here as an example. In order to enter an activity, the trap needs to be selected fr from the map. Sometimes they're a little crowded. You might have to zoom in a little bit just to be sure you are selecting the correct trap. Tap to select. It gets a little blue halo, and the data form opens here on the left. And then either tap on this link button or scroll up until you find that link. And it's the it's called the JB Trap Activities table. So this link brings you to that table related to this trap site. So let's go ahead and open that activities table. And there you can see the whole history of that trap site. Now there's not a lot of history here because it's just me adding some tests points here, but you can see that the trap was monitored in February. Obviously, that's way past due. Let's go ahead and add an activity. To add an activity, you tap Add, and that opens that activities form. This form follows those same rules. It's got some questions for you to enter, some required fields and some hints. Let's go ahead and do that activity type. Let's say this time we're replacing the lure. If I were to choose any of these two remove activities, either remove or remove missing, then overnight that automated script that the data team has going would change then the status of that trap site to inactive. It's been removed. It's inactive. And it would change the symbol on the map to match that legend we saw. So we're going to just go ahead and replace the lore, but this has a lot of power in there. 
And then field sample number, if you took one, activity date should be today. I'll close that up. Comments, I'll say test. Check that over and submit. And there we go. So let's say we um, we entered some things in um, and we found that we need we actually did it wrong. Maybe this one that I entered with you together, this trap site here, I put in state cooperator and it wasn't a state cooperator. Maybe it was a tribal entry. In order to edit, it's a very similar technique to adding an activity. You need to select that trap site, look for that edit or pencil icon. It's there and it's also if you scroll down, you might have noticed that edit option there. Oops. If you tap on the map, it will close everything out like I just did by accident. So I'm going to go ahead and tap edit. And I'm going to, let's see, I'll change the agency to be tribal cooperator. This is an edit now that needs to be submitted. So I will hit submit. And there we go. So now we have entered a, a placed a new trap. We've also entered an activity on a previously placed trap. And these trap site symbols would over, would would update overnight with that updated script when you synchronize your data. Now in the training map, it's not going to do that for me. That's in the official map. But I do want to show you again the sync button. And now we've got all of our edits here that we've done together listed. And then we would go ahead while well connected to Wi-Fi, which I happen to be now, I would hit this sync button. All right. I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit sync as we um, talk a little bit. And that should go through while we while we move on with some reminders. Okay, so this is my list of reminders. And the big one is right on top, of course. Be sure that you are in the right URL, whether it's the official or the training version of that map when you're entering data. So just like both you and I did when we looked at the map, we looked for the title, that training map. Um, another thing that I'll show you in a second is that base map in the training version. It's kind of like light gray, a little ugly. The official map is a nice vibrant imagery. So you can look for those signs, but make sure you're in the right version. Use that disconnected workflow and be sure that you're performing a daily data sync. In fact, I recommend morning and night for that since there are automations you can pull in. Uh, be careful with your data collection. I think that's maybe more directed to myself. Um, I, I can't tell you how many times I've looked one more time over the form and found an S somewhere or a misspelling or I misspell my own name sometimes. So just make sure you give it that one more look and then hit submit. And the submit button fail, we saw uh, it happens if you have missed a required field and it'll kind of point you in the right direction there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and since I forgot, which is so typical of me, I want to show you the difference. I've got my uh, PPQ or my government cell here. I'm going to place it right on top so you can see the difference here. Um, I opened field maps and I am signed in on my phone in the production portal and on my iPad in the stage portal. So on my iPad, we're looking at the training version and we played around in it as is appropriate and added all kinds of fake test data. And then on my iPhone, I am signed into the official production map. So I don't want to use this to add any data that's not official, only official data. But you can see I have done the same thing. I've downloaded an offline area for this map. I'll open up that and I am connected to Wi-Fi. I should disconnect out in the field and I should go ahead and use this offline map. I'll open that up. Um, you can see, let me make this, get these layers out of here, exit out of that. You can see the buttons along the top are all the same. Sync, layer, search, um, that overflow menu is there. Um, I've got the same layers available. I'll turn off markup. Same layers available. If I need to see it, I can kind of pull up these menus or pull them down or exit. The legend is still here available for you. And same way of um, collecting data. You want to add data, you tap the add button 
and that opens the options here for the layers that are enabled. If I want to add a trap site, I go ahead and tap it. And the data form always opens to like kind of half mast. So you've got the map on top and your data form below. You can pull that up and, and down as you need to. You can zoom in and out on the map as you need to. So you can see it, it really does operate the same. It's just a small screen that you need to manage. But a big difference between uh, base maps here is this light gray for the training and this imagery here where you see trees and agricultural land um, that is our official map so you, that kind of tells you right away am i in the right map so um, we're showing you both sorry about that i almost always forget that ipad uh, iphone situation all right getting help so we went through a lot of things here today um, I mentioned that survey protocol is not what is being taught here today. We just teach you how to enter the data as the form was designed. And the Japanese Beetle program has a national operations manager, that is Leo Donoval. He is your person for all things survey protocol. Um, iPad, and it should say here iPhone, any device issue, CECIT supports our devices, so you want to open a ticket with them. Access to this portal or the correct role to be able to enter data, any of those questions, always start, and I've got it in parentheses, but it's important, start with your supervisor. Um, your supervisor should know how to get you access and has to approve these things. Access to the maps themselves, your supervisor needs to approve and request. But your supervisor might go down these other bullet points. You also have a local field GIS specialist supporting your area. And there is an email box, um, the webgis.connect at usda.gov. It's monitored by um, a group of folks that can help you if you need that. Anything training, that's my group. Um, EUTG is end user tools group. And please have a look at the mobile data collection tools webpage first and for everything we sometimes that's being updated daily at some points of the year um, so make sure that you're keeping an eye on that and making use of the tools that are put there if there is something missing please let us know and we'll make sure to get get those things to you i'm going to put these two links here in your chat box again um, both this mobile data collection tools page but also just a good time to remind you to take a moment open that quiz up give yourself the ability to refresh what you've learned already here today um, test yourself use that quiz um, go through all of that and with that i'm just going to pause and see if you have any questions we kind of just stepped through these layers quickly but it's new to have them all in one map um, so for visual and trapping in general are there any questions or is there anything that I could show you again or in more detail? And feel free to unmute. There's um, there's not a ton of us here. I'm okay with that. Or if you feel like putting it in the chat, that's fine as well. Wow, okay, maybe all of you feel super confident. All right, oh, thanks, Dan. Okay, well then what we'll do is I'm gonna go ahead and pause here. We'll take a break and if, if you're done and you and you need nothing further, have a great day. Good luck out there. Glad to have you. Thanks for being here. If you want to come back at the top of the hour, 11 Pacific time, we will train on aircraft inspections. Again, that's using survey one, two, three. So I will let you go, but I'm going to be here hanging out. So if you think of something, feel free to unmute or put it in the chat. I'm just going to give you some music to listen to and uh, we'll take a little break until 11 for those who want to come back. Thanks, everybody. Hey, welcome back. It is right on the hour for me, and I think it's time for us to stop being on break um, and go ahead and start on aircraft inspections. So I think we've lost a few, but most of you stayed on. I'm going to try not to repeat myself too much for your sake, for mine too, but you know, anyway, for all of our sake. Um, but hey, I'm Jenny Sauer. This is the End User Tools Presents Japanese Beetle Aircraft Inspections section. Aircraft inspections are done using the ArcGIS Survey123 mobile application. So we're going to look at that too. Um, so let's get started. 
Uh, firstly, you should need three things um, on your own. You need a mobile device, which could be an iPad or an iPhone. It could even be an Android if that's something that you're using. Most commonly, it's iPhone or iPad. I'm going to use my iPad to demo today, but I'm going to try really hard to remember to show you what it looks like on the iPhone. It really is just a smaller screen to manage and um, considering using a disconnected workflow, even though you may have a tendency not to want to, it's still the best way to collect data. So I will show you what that looks like on both, but I will heavily use the larger screen so you get a better view of the iPad. So first you need a mobile device. That was a long way of saying that. Secondly, you should feel very comfortable or pretty comfortable. I'll say pretty comfortable fairly comfortable using the ArcGIS Survey123 app. For many of you, you are returning for the next year of this. Japanese Beetle used Survey123 last year. It's really just a matter of understanding how to um, sign in, download your survey form, and just filling out the surveys and completing them and, and submitting them. So that whole workflow. Device the app itself. And thirdly, the third thing is survey protocol. And you have Leo Donoval is your national operations manager who is responsible for making sure you understand survey protocol. Today, we're just going to go through using the data form in survey one, two, three, and make sure you understand how it is intended to be used to collect data for Japanese Beetle aircraft inspections. I'm going to put two links in the chat. One is uh, the mobile data collection tools webpage, and the second is the quiz. I see many of you have already completed the quiz. Congratulations, you smarty pantses. Um, but I'm just giving you those again. And once again, this is what the mobile data collection tools website looks like. The top half, once again, just as a reminder, under general training documents, you have a user guide here for Survey123. In the video gallery, you also have foundational training. If I scroll down, I'll get to survey one, two, three. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight self paced trainings for survey one, two, three. I would encourage you to do these at least one time through um, just to give yourself that le level of comfort. But if you feel totally comfortable and this is, you know, kind of routine for you, maybe just give it a view and, and have a look at the things that might be might need a refresher, maybe downloading surveys, maybe um, completing the form, what have you, but give it a, another little look. Our uh, training here today also will show up in the video gallery under this category pest programs. It'll show up here in a, about a week, so give me a little time to get that up. You can also search by title or keyword. So that's that one. And the training quiz, the one thing for you to take special note of is this question three. Make sure that you're entering your email address with care and you'll get an automated email saying you completed this training. So that might help you with your supervisor. Um, maybe you just like knowing all the trainings you attended and you gather those into a little file. That's what I like to do. Um, and for my side, it gives me some peace of mind that when I give these trainings, that the things that I want you to take away, that you're taking those away well. So um, no pressure on the quiz, but feel free to do that as we talk through aircraft inspections. You'll get a question on aircraft inspections. Um, in in and a question on trapping and visual. So if you only participate in one or the other, you will not have to answer questions if it's not something you use. All right, diving in. Um, really, we're going to talk about the same things, the same topics. I'm going to move on through to our kind of bullet points. I always like to talk through what signing in looks like. Um, we're going to talk about the disconnected workflow, which is a little different for survey one, two, three. Um, we're not going to look at map layers this time. We're going to look at the survey itself, the form, and I'll give you a demo of that, and then we'll have some reminders on that. So survey one, two, three, survey one, two, three, it is meant to be a form based data collection tool out in the field, and it is meant to be used while disconnected. Now survey one, two, three, different from field maps has a desktop version, so you can enter data from your desktop as well. So that's a, a little bit of a plus there for some. 
when you first sign in, it doesn't ask ask you actually to sign in to the enterprise portal as field maps does it asks you to manage your ArcGIS connections. So you select manage ArcGIS connections as that little red box indicates and you're going to go ahead and type in the URL that connects you to that enterprise portal. So again, there's a user guide and there are videos that show you how to do this. I don't want to walk you through those steps, but I do want to let you know um, that this managing GIS connections is the option. And then there are connections. There's an S there. So similar to field maps, after you've entered those connections, you'll have your last connection that was set up here as an option. So then, then evermore, when you sign in, you have this option to sign in and just tap that URL. But also similar to field maps, there are two URLs that you need to be aware of. So this is that maps.mrp. If you need to manage connections and add a different one, that's where you would switch between them. And those two are the same as field maps. So officially, uh, my team, the end user tools group, creates a survey form in survey one, two, three for official data collection in this top URL, this top instance. I'm going to give you those same boxes again so you see the difference. The official mrp.usda URL is the instance that collects official data for Japanese Beetle. And then we also create a training survey so that you can practice or play around and enter surveys or or demonstrate like we are today. Again, those surveys have a title of training right there in, in the title. And you access them by signing into this stage instance. So that um, in the red box here, we've got maps-stg or stage.mrp. So again, you want to be sure that you are signed in through that correct portal connection being stage or MRP, um, this official data site for official survey forms, and this training or stage URL for, for practice or play. Today, I'm signed into um, the staging portal or the training version on my iPad. And on my iPhone, I have the official or the production portal signed in. So we can see what that looks like in just a little bit. The disconnected workflow, it operates in a very similar way in survey one, two, three. It really depends on this red box and your office prep before you leave to go collect surveys out in the field. Um, it, again, as I said, survey one, two, three allows you to do this at the desktop. But if you're using a mobile device, you can do this disconnected. And the way that's done is very similar to field maps in that while you're connected to a reliable Wi-Fi source, you download that survey to your device, disconnect from Wi-Fi. Again, I always like to just test it in the parking lot before you really go out there. Make sure the form opens, everything looks good. Head on out there, collect survey forms. They're saved to an outbox. When you go ahead to try to send them when you're disconnected, you have the option to save it to an outbox. Basically, it saves it on your device. And then when you return back to the office or to a reliable network of any kind, um, that prep happened. Again, that last step, similar to syncing in field maps, you're going to send everything out of that outbox. And I always add charge of the device. That's just kind of my uh, way of looking through things. So that's an important way to use survey one, two, three and collect data out on the field when you need to do that while disconnected. The survey form itself starts like this. When you open the form, you have the option to collect or this bar here for overview and the overview bar shows you all of the surveys you've collected. You can go ahead and go in there and look at them. It just gives you kind of like a summary of the forms that you have uh, completed. In order to collect a new form, just like field maps, it's a plus plus button to add data. You add data by tapping on the add and go ahead and open up that form. Well, let's go ahead and look at what that form looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and open up my PPQ iPad and we're going to open survey one, two, three. 
it's signing in all by itself. And some of you may have noticed that URL did say STG. I know that I'm signed into the stage portal. I also see the word training coming up a lot. So that should be a pretty good hint in the title and in um, some of the thumbnail photos. If I needed to, I could go to my profile and I could go ahead and sign out. Right here in this profile, I can also see that I'm signed into stage. I see MRP stage right there, so I can check it. Okay, that's good. For today, that's where I want to be. If I was going out into the field to collect data, I would need to sign out and manage those connections and sign into the correct portal. So for now, I'm going to leave that alone. Um, that's also where I might download a survey. Um, I've got a weird thing where it's not uh, showing up here in this 2023 title for me, but you should see training in the title and in the um, thumbnail. For whatever reason, our stage portal's acting up for me today. <laughs> so um, ignore that, but you should see similar to this is last year's um, Japanese Beetle survey. I'm going to go ahead and open this year's survey. And well, actually, let's go back out there. We've got a little number one here in red. That's different from the others you see here, right? And that's an indicator that I have a survey sitting there waiting. That number would change if I had more. I have only one. So now let's open it up. And I have also a red number one here and an outbox bar. And previously, the, the little screenshot we saw just had a collect and an overview. Because I saved a form that I completed to my device rather than sending it, because I was disconnected, it saved it to an outbox and it has it waited, just waiting here to send out. So if I were ready to send it, I would open that outbox and I would go ahead and hit send here at the bottom right. I could also look at it on a map. Right now it's showing me a list. I'm not going to worry about that right now because I want to show you what the form looks like, but that's what saving it on the device kind of does. And it waits for you to go ahead and send those out. So if you have an outbox with a number, that means that survey has not been synced up with the online survey. It's just sitting on your device. So you don't want to leave surveys sitting here in the outbox and that end of day synchronization is important. At the end of the day, connect back to Wi-Fi, send everything out of your outbox. Don't ever hold on to data like I am doing right now, but that's just for example. So let's say we want to collect data. We're going to go ahead and tap this collect or plus bar. And that opens the survey form. On the top bit, it's still loading, but there's a little map that's sorting out my location as we speak using GPS. And you want to go ahead and make sure that location is correct. If you need to, you can tap on the map. You can put in a map coordinate or a address to locate yourself and change that if you need to. And then once you're happy with it, you can go ahead and tap that that little bottom check mark at the bottom right. I'm happy with it. That's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and tap that. This form has required fields that are indicated by a red asterisk after them. Some defaults are in place. So you can see it already defaulted to state cooperator. I'm going to switch that. The inspection date is automatically today's date and timestamp, but I can tap and change that if I needed to. I'm going to leave that alone. That seems fine. This is where survey protocol really comes into play. So I'm just going to fill this out uh, to show you how the form is filled out, but you want to make sure you understand survey protocol in filling this out. I'm going to go ahead and tap this little drop down to get the choices close the keyboard, I can scroll with my fingers to choose airports, tap an airport name. Same thing with carrier, I could type it in if I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and hit Alaska. Well, actually, what I'm going to say is none of these fit. Well, at the very last, the option is other. And if I choose other, I'm going to be asked to enter what that carrier name is. So in this case, I'm going to say Jenny's airline. That's our carrier. So obviously fake, right? But you would obviously enter the correct one. Flight number, I'm going to say test 01. The origin, I'm going to choose Anchorage. Again, the option of other is down there. If chosen, you'll enter what that location is. 
route, I'm going to say, I'm going to close this so you can see it, keep scrolling up. I'll say, it says not applicable, I'll say direct, regulated at origin. If I change that, I can kind of just toggle through. Aircraft tail number, I'm going to again test 01. Aircraft type, let's choose an Airbus. Keep scrolling up on this form. So just work your way down the form using survey protocol, entering all of the required fields. The arrival time is asking you for military time. It is right now my time, 1216 military time, done. Time of inspection, I'll say, uh, as the clock is kind of moving along, I'll say that's 1230. To the end of inspection, from and to, I'll say this is 1245. And now it's asking me, were any Japanese beetle suspects discovered? Yes or no? If I say yes, I have to enter a sample record. So this opens a related table to this question regarding the Japanese beetle suspects. In order to enter a record, I follow the directions. Um, go ahead and click here to enter the sample record. Click, then click the plus below. Plus, now we have a group of questions on that Japanese beetle specimen. I'm going to choose the location. I'm going to choose from this range of its lifespan. I'll say it's dead but fresh. I'm going to give it a count. I'm going to just write test in here as the comments. And that is complete. That section is complete. If I were to have taken another sample, more than one, we have the option here, it's it's telling us this is one of one, but I can use this plus to add another Japanese beetle sample. So there's our plus to add that other sample. And if needed, I could go ahead and trash this little sample record as well, just this little section. I'm gonna keep moving and say, was it treated at the airport? No. Was an EAN ID issued? If I say yes, it asks me for that number. If I say no, it does not. So you can see there's related questions that just keep carrying through as you work your way through the survey. Was a notice of violation issued? Um, if I say yes, it asks for more information. If I say no, I don't have that question. Were any spotted lanternfly suspects discovered? So this um, Japanese beetle survey is also looking for spotted lanternfly suspects. If I say no, I move on. If I say yes, I get a similar related table in order to add sample information on that spotted lanternfly. And same thing, click on that and click the plus to add a record we have a set of questions here on that sample collection. I'll just go ahead and answer that as well. Sample count, and you can tell I'm not following survey protocol. I hope I'm not offending anyone. I'll just put test and close that keyboard. Again, I can add multiple samples here under the SLF sample section, or I could go ahead and say, oh no, that wasn't actually even a suspect. Someone, someone put this in erroneously. I can go ahead and garbage that bit. Um, and then we have a few more questions to the end. This is a, um, let's see, it doesn't have a star, so it's not a required field. Were there any other pests found? If yes, pest names should be entered. Time of discovery, et cetera. I'm going to say no. Time of discovery of beetles or other suspect pests, I'm, I'm going to say that happened around 1245. That was, uh, if I scroll up, kind of the time frame of my inspection there, right? And the inspector, it says first and last names or inspection team name. So we've got a little hint there as a subtitle. It tells us how to complete that entry. I'm going to go ahead and just give it my name. There we go. And inspection comments, anything related to all of this inspection here, um, can have a, a place here in the inspection comments. Now, I don't have anything to say, but I do want to make sure everyone knows this is not real data. Even though I know I'm in a training version, I'm just going to say test. And now what I what I would do as with any form is go back to the top, make sure it was kind of a lengthy form. 
Am I in the right location? Check over all of the data that I've entered to this point. Make sure that that's all done right. And then this check mark at the bottom right, it doesn't seem really, uh, really outrageous, but this is your check mark that submits your form, your survey. So if I tap that, it's going to tell me if I missed something. Number one, it says, please enter uppercase letters. OK, so I've entered this data wrong. Let's go ahead and change that to TS01 and see if that does it for us. Close that keyboard. And now let's try and submit this again. So now I am connected to Wi-Fi. So I have the option to go ahead and send now just since I'm connected, go ahead and send it. If you're not connected to Wi-Fi and you've downloaded the survey, just like I have, then you would only have these bottom two options. Continue this survey takes you right back to the form and lets you maybe make some edits before you submit it. Or save in the outbox, which is that outbox we looked at before. I'm going to go ahead and hit send now. And it's going to go ahead and send it. Now, I already have discovered today that I'm having trouble in the stage environment. Um, I pointed out earlier that that training um, title isn't coming up for me and I'm having trouble connecting. So it didn't send, but you know what it did? It saved it to the outbox. So now I have two saved to the outbox and it's titled that here at the top. But if I go back to the beginning, now that number that was one is now a two. And again, I can always review my outbox there by list. I could look at it in a map. Um, I could look at, um, of course, they're right on top of each other. That's where I live. Um, but right now I'm having trouble. So that's OK. It's saving it to an outbox. But I'm going to want to pay attention to that and make sure my surveys get out. So that's what that survey form looks like. I want to show you what that looks like also from the iPhone view. So I've got my government iPhone here. I'm just going to place it there for you. Open survey one, two, three. Now, I mentioned earlier that I was signed in. You see that little URL that flashed at the bottom? I'm signed into the production or the maps.mrp.maps rather than the staging portal. So my iPhone itself is, is real data should be coming in here, not play data. So I don't actually want to enter a form, but I want to show you that it looks the same. I've already also um, downloaded that survey itself. But if I go to my profile menu here at the top right, I could download the survey, I could sign out, and I can check that I am in the MRP rather than the stage portal. So I know that on my iPhone, only official data or only official survey should be completed. So that's all here. If I open that survey, you can see we've got the same kind of thing going on. Of course, I don't have an outbox here because I don't on my phone have any surveys waiting to go out. That's only the case on this device. So this device, my iPad is holding on to two surveys, but my iPhone is not. It's not listed there. So if I want to go ahead and collect data, I'll tap collect. And you can see it's just a smaller screen. It's also loading that map in my location. And I've got the same form and all of the same um, same things waiting there for me. I'm going to close that. And then when I was ready to, if I was ready to um, submit the form, there's my little check mark. I'm not. And I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that because I don't want to submit a, uh, any kind of play data in the official site, but it's all there. Same view, smaller screen, uh, just a matter of managing that screen. All right, so that's the survey form. A couple of reminders with survey one, two, three. It's, um, it's the same kind of deal between the official and training surveys. You want to make sure that you've signed in correctly. Really big caveat with that outbox. So I know I'm having trouble with stage and I'm holding on to a couple things. That's training, that's play data. It's not a big deal. But if you find that, that something like that is happening to you in the production portal where you are trying to submit real surveys, real official data, make sure that you sort that out right away. Don't hold on to data on your device. 
um, that's keeping it to yourself. It's like writing in a diary. <laughs> so make sure that you are sending things out of that outbox if you're operating that way. And careful data collection, that's always a good reminder. Always give that form another look-see. As you all have seen and have experienced last year, it's a pretty long uh, form. Make sure that you're entering the data according to survey protocol and that you're being consistent in the way that you do that. Um, and then getting help. We talked through the form itself and gave you some resources to look into, but the survey protocol person of, uh, of interest, your Japanese Beetle Program National Operations Manager is Leo Donoval. So questions about survey protocol, how exactly things should be entered, should be directed to Leo. Um, device issues, you want to open a ticket with CECIT. Portal access itself, access to the survey, um, making sure you have a role that allows you to enter data in these surveys, or maybe you're using it on your desktop support there. You want to start with your supervisor first. Always check with your supervisor because your supervisor should have avenues to help you and is the person that has to approve your entry into this whole system as well. They may check in with the field GIS specialist in your area. They may also email this webgis.connect for answers from a larger group. And anything training related, back to that mobile data collection tools webpage if possible. Um, my group, the end user tools group, that's the EUTG there on that last bullet. Um, we work really hard to make sure that is up to date and gives you resources that you need. But if there's something that you're looking for, look at the web page first. And if there's something that should be there, let us know. We want to make sure that you're getting all the help that you need. And that quiz, just a little reminder, I know some of you have already done this, but if you haven't, uh, just a little reminder to take a moment there. So that went by pretty quick, um, everyone. And it it's a pretty, pretty long survey. And there are some ins and outs there. Um, I just want to see if there's any questions. Go ahead, uh, Cheryl, Cherie, go ahead. Whatever my name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> OK, if I'm going on a military airport and they've got nine big B-15s on there, do I have to make nine different entries and get their tail numbers? That sounds like a survey protocol question to me. So I would go to Leo and ask that question. OK. Um, because I couldn't tell you how the, how the program wants to record that. I can only tell you that, that the form has spots for it. Oh, yay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Hey, Thank I can't you. know everything. But hey, yeah, no, that's a, that's a good question. Um, that's a really good question. All right, thank you. Sure. Wow, you guys have been great. You're so quiet. Um, well, I know that the, these go fast. So I'll just say um, I'm going to go ahead and let you go about your day. Thank you for being here. Good luck out there. I hope survey protocol questions come easily, the answers come easily to your questions. And um, I'll, I'm just going to stick around for another five minutes or so. You're, you're welcome to leave. Or if there's something else I can show you, please feel free to um, type something in the chat or, or speak up. I'm going to hang out for another five minutes or so. And uh, I'll let you go. Thank you all for being here.